Um, okay, uh, good morning. Well, I thought, uh, figured since I hadn't done one of these videos in a very, very long time, uh, I thought I'd go ahead and do a video on, uh, my Ranger build here. And, uh, like before, this is gonna be a video that I'm probably gonna add on, uh, every single, uh, every single boss kill video I do. Um, every other, every other relevant video I do with my Ranger. I'm probably gonna go ahead and uh, attach this video here to it so uh, I don't have to go explaining what my build consists of every single time I I run something so, uh, but I guess uh, well I guess to start off with oh one other thing I do want to bring up to is um my character is solo cell phone so a good chunk of a good chunk of the things that I do is because I'm just I'm taking what the game gives me. Gee, I I can't just trot on down to the local POE train and buy whatever I need. No, I gotta rely on rely on drops and whatever I find in shops, etc. So with that, um, to start with, my ranger is a raider ranger. Um, he's senator. She centered her on Onslaught. Uh, cause, because I like me some speed. Uh, same thing here. With Frenzy Charges and if and whenever I uh, complete the Uber Labyrinth, the next one's gonna be this one. Um, the reason and the reason why the Ranger is my main is mainly because of speed. It, because uh, I mean, I mean I had him. I mean I have him. I also uh, I also play a Marauder, but for the longest time, his uh, speed was uh, zero attack speed and minus eight percent movement speed, and he had that for a long time. So the farther away I get from that, the better. I I am no fan of Act One speed, which is also one of the reasons why I play on standard. I don't want to start over again. Um, but aside from that, yeah, just kind of, kind of give you a rough idea of what I got here. Um, but starting with the build, but with the build itself, her main attack ability is Viper Strike. Hey, I just I like. I like the uh, I like the poison mechanic. It can stack in unlike uh, I think it's uh, unlike most other most other elemental and non-elemental attacks, this can stack and it can stack infinitely. So, which uh, lends itself very well to a speed-based build. You know, you're putting on you're putting on the stacks of poison. You're putting on many of them. Um. Plus, uh, I think overall, the ability is very cheap. I mean, my, my single target with all the stuff I got is mana cost is 12 and 15. So, not too pricey. So, I could actually sustain this build a lot easier than I could, say, my Marauder, uh, who is not a mana positive build. He can't sustain himself on single target, so the mana just kind of gradually drops. So, so yeah, there was a. I think there was something else about this I liked. I can't remember what it was. Oh, it's kind of a. I don't. It's not to me. It's not a practical bone. It's. It's kind of a weird way to explain it, but uh. It, considering the fact that it's mainly a poison attack, it makes us ching 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 really super loud sound which I don't doesn't really fit but uh there's actually an advantage to it usually when I play this game I often stream vital records so the the extra ching 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 actually helps to cover up the music somewhat because uh the way twitch works is uh if it hears any kind of third party music that's uh copyrighted it mutes it I mean I'd want it and because of that 
I would ra that's all hang on I'm getting ahead of myself it is the reason why I would rather stream on Twitch than on YouTube because on YouTube YouTube will just sit there and flag my entire video for copyright. If he hears any kind of copyrighted music at all, it just flags the whole entire thing. On Twitch, it only mutes the offending piece. I'm kind of going off on a tangent. Sorry about that, but so having the um, having the extra sound, having that loud sound effect, helps to kind of kind of distract us so much. So I'm not having so I'm not having at least half my damn videos being muted. Which basically forces me to delete them, so that's kind of another little upside of Wiper Strike. Um, but I think there was there's something else about it I liked. I can't remember what it was, so I'll just move right along. Um, but anyway, your single target attack is Viper Strike with faster attacks. And multi strike. Um, I've heard a uh, one of my viewers said something about faster attacks and multi strike is actually is actually bad or redundant or something like that. But the thing of it is, is I gotta get the speed going. It it doesn't. I think there was a time where I just had faster attacks and got rid of the multi strike. I mean, if you look at the mana multiplier, one hundred eighty percent, you're paying almost double. The amount of mana just to have that in there, but again, I, again, I, I have to have to hit quick. I have to hit often. I mean, I, again, after playing my Marauder, you know, who didn't have any attack speed at all. I mean, personally, I'd rather be an I'd rather be an Ip Man or IP Man than a George Foreman. That's that's the answer I was looking for. But yeah, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather hit do little rabbit punches, but do like many of them that have to sit here, uh, uh, you know, a, a punch that starts over here in Cincinnati, and then heads over to Des Moines, Iowa, and then to Phoenix, Arizona, and then finally lands in San Francisco. I mean, I, no thank you. I mean, I don't care if they're one hit kills. I don't care if those are one hit kills. It is too damn slow for me. So again. I just basically I I feel naked what I feel naked having only one or the other, but not both. Oh, and then the um, other one, bile toxins. There might there might have been others that could fit the bill, but again it just it lends itself bile toxins lends itself perfectly to poison. I mean it's centered around poisoning, so And then um, her AOE ability is also Viper Strike, um, and with faster attacks, bile toxins, melee splash, and ancestors call. Um, I don't, I don't remember. I am somewhere in the forums, Reddit, somewhere said that uh, these two are actually bad. That uh, I should use something like Reeve. But, I mean, unless Reeve uh, converts 25% of your physical into chaos, and unless Reeve has a 60% chance to poison, then yeah, I'd be using it, but it doesn't. All it does is just expanding AoE. Uh, Blade Flurry, same thing. Uh, there is Blade Flurry, Blade Vortex, there are others too, but. There is no chaos conversion, and there is no chance to poison on any of them. So, so I just went with this, and that I just went with this instead. I consider Viper Strike too important of an ability to pass up. Oh, and I, I should probably mention some of the gear as well. Uh, getting back to this, supported by level 16 blind, and a 5% global chance to blind. Um, to me, this is a very valuable survivability, survivability aspect, because this is not an armor-based build. It is a pure avoidance build. So, being able to blind enemies is very important on this. Um, and then my chest piece there, uh, Hiri's ire, zodiac leather. Um, like super high evasion rating, like higher than 
any of the yellow gears I've ever come across. I mean, the, the cold damage and the uh, chill duration, I don't really care much for. Uh, the extra 10% chance to dodge, both attack and spells, very valuable, so definitely a keeper. The only other chess piece I consider for this, don't know the name of it, but uh, it's one that uh, allows you to have an additional curse on monsters, and it also bypasses hexproof. If I ever came across that one, this would be in close competition for this for this slot here. Um, next up, my movement slash teleport ability is charge dash with faster attacks, um, an increased crit, and power charge on crit. I'm just trying to add, a do add another dimension to my ranger here. Uh, just, and I go on the tree real quick. Type down crit. And she's got a, she's got a fair amount of nodes. I think some of them I might have picked, some of them I might have picked up, some of them I might, I probably haven't. But, uh, crit's pretty, um, it's pretty heavy around around this part of the tree, so fairly easy access, so might as well boost it up since I have the option to do so. And like probably over here on the opposite side, it's like in order to get any kind of crit, I have to be a Templar and I have to wield a staff. Uh, Marauder has has a little bit here and there. Duelist doesn't have deadly squats, so So that was another reason why. I mean, why not? Because it's there. Uh, secondly, another reason, and another reason why that, especially as of recent, is because of this ring here, Pyre. Got some pretty good resists. Um, don't care much for the burning damage. Don't care much for the uh, the cold to fire conversion. Uh, the real big draw on this ring is the mod on the bottom. Ignited enemies you hit are destroyed on kill. Which is now pretty much uh, mandatory on all my builds. It's something I'll work for on all of them. Uh, I've got to be able to blow monsters up. And to me, that's another key component of my survivability. Only having to kill them once. And not having to deal with any corpse explosions or having them, having them being revived again and ruining all my hard work. Or, in the case, in a cases like the the gardens map boss who actually uh feeds on corpses and heals them up you know stuff like that um the yellow monsters with all the soul eater mod i think um uh, consumes them and it makes them more powerful stuff like that that bottom mod there shuts it all down and um for those that don't know don't know about crit whatever you create a target um ignite um breathing Freezing, shocking, and igniting all happen 100%. So, now more than ever, I need a, I need, crit needs to be part of this build. And then, uh, as far as the item itself, it's got all three resists. That's very rare in any other piece of gear where it's only like one or two mods, you know, or like one or, one or two elements. Uh, either that or it's a resist all, but uh, the numbers on there at the numbers on resist all are a lot lower than uh, single ones. So that's pretty much the only reason I got this in there. Uh, then moving on, uh, blood rage with blood magic. Uh, that's mainly there just to take some of the heat off of my mana. Because it costs uh, 57 mana, and that's that's almost half of my uh, mana pool right there. So just uh, taking it off my uh, taking it off my life can uh, really help that out. Then increased duration. Um, this I've had I've also had people I've had viewers tell me this too that you don't need increased duration on Blood Rage. 
But, um, you know, because it refreshes on kill. But the thing of it is, is I'm not going to be killing monsters 100% of the time. So, and it, it's a major pain in the butt to have to sit here and recast it between every battle. And in there is oftentimes I even forget to do it even with increased duration on it. So, increased duration, you know, helps buy me some time here. Um, and then I got a specifically veil haste. I mean, I mean, hate regular haste is actually a, this is kind of a two for one deal on this gem, but all I care about is veil haste. I mean, if a regular haste didn't take off 50% of my mana, I probably would be using it, but it's too expensive. But, uh, it. This, this too also has increased duration. Uh, blood magic, kind of irrelevant. I think that only applies to the to the aura part and not the veil haste itself, so. Oh, and then, then kind of the same thing here. I found awesome mods on this. It's got uh, decent resistances on uh, three elements. Then it's got 30% increase, 30% movement speed, which is pretty rare, so. Despite the fact that it's a duelist item, I'm still using it anyway. And then, summon Ice Golem with uh, Elemental Resist and then Life Support. Oh, and uh, I might as well bring up my weapons. I'm I'm a dual wielder now. For the longest time, I used to be um, I used to be Rapier and Shield. Just rapier to me is my it's still my favorite weapon rapiers I just even in real life I've got a I kind of like I'm not not big on fencing or anything like that but it just I mean again I'm more of a I'm more of an I'm more of an it man IP man or how we pronounce that I'm more I'm more of that kind of person than I am a <clears throat> big George Foreman kind of person um. I guess you could probably say Muhammad Ali as well. Although Muhammad Ali, I don't recall him ever going <laughs> like a Ip Man can. But again, uh, so I dual wield Wasp Nest. Uh, mainly because of uh, all that extra chaos damage. Um, it's got high, high crit, high attacks per second, got pretty decent damage, and uh, 40 life gain. Which, and to go off on another tangent here, and I made sure to put this in my inventory. Um, one of my other viewers was also just was also suggesting I use this uh, Hellion Bloodseeker. Um, the big one on this, it's got life leech, but you gain life le you gain that leech instantly. But two issues, uh, two big issues on that is um. The life leech is based on physical attack damage. I mean, I, I did use I did use this claw for a while, but I found the uh, healing kind of sucked on it. It wasn't as good as the stuff I originally had. So no, after noticing that, I kind of did some research on this and found it to be not that good, uh, mainly because my physical damage isn't that high. One big reason why is uh, viper strike. 25% of my uh, physical damage is being converted to chaos damage. And, um, which, uh, which I'm guessing, um, which I'm guessing the damage conversion happens first. Then, um, whatever, then the life leech happens afterwards. And, um, the second reason is, uh, you're gaining leech instantly from hits with that weapon. It's not global. It's not, you're not, it's not instant, it's not global instant leech or anything like that. It's just with that weapon. Um, and if you look at the, uh, what was I could probably, let me do this. Um, go down here. Main hand physical, 204 to 702.
368 to 635. Let me go back to this. Yeah. Man, 368 to 635. Uh, higher minimum, lower max damage. But again, if we take a uh, We take 368. Let me uh, grab my calculator real quick. So, with this here, 2.8 percent of 635, we'll say. Five, and we multiply it times. If my calculations are correct, it's going to come out to 17. 635 times. No, that definitely ain't right. But six, 635 times point, point zero two eight. It comes out to 17. Or if you want to round it up, it comes out to 18. It's only it's only healing 18 life per second. Compared to this, which is healing 40 life per second. So, healing is much better. Again, it's still a keeper weapon. But, um, I need to deal a lot more physical damage in order for it to be worth it. Again, look, the bottom mod, if you look at the bottom mod, it's only from hits with that weapon. It's not global. Uh, but now that that tangent's over, um, and then um, for a while, I was using more Tim Morsu. Um, I was dual wielding these. Uh, big drawback, you can probably tell already. It's the damage ain't there. The damage is way less. The healing is half of uh, what a throat stabber is. Um, and uh, it's also got a waste of a mod on there. Reduced enemy stun threshold. I mean, Claw should not be having that. The only weapons that should be having anything stun related is uh, maces, scepters, and staffs. Blunt weapons. Not nothing edged or pointy. So there's that. Um, But again, 24 to 92 compared to 58 to 200, no contest. Damage ain't there. And suppose I could do this. Total combined damage, 178 to 556. that back on but yeah so right now wasp nest is best in slot for me uh, but continuing to move along okay I've already I've already stated this and um, I mainly have him in there just again for the accuracy and the extra crit so I think for the longest time I had a stone golem in there, but the extra uh, the extra life regen doesn't really help me much, because again this is a pure avoidance build. I'm either taking full damage or no damage at all, uh, so the extra regen ain't gonna be help. It's kind of pointless. Uh, veil haste I already covered it, and then vitality. Uh, vitality is mainly in there to, co to counteract the life loss from blood rage. Without it, I'd I'd be having a 
I'd be having to use one of my flasks every so often. Just, just to cover this, so. So vitality is valuable. Um, poacher's mark. With blasphemy, an increased area effect. Um, area effect, some will probably say it's unnecessary, but I want my area effect to be as much as the, uh, to be as much as the area effect from this. Splash it out, Ancestor's Call. So, that's just going to result in more healing. Um, I've never had any viewers give me any comments on this. But, uh, I know of uh, browsing the forums, a lot of people say Poacher's Mark sucks. Whereas, I find it very valuable. Uh, to start with, it's what makes my build sustainable. Cursed Enemies grant 12 mana when hit. This is what, that's what, uh, so that's, and my mana cost in single target is 12 and 15. So, excuse me, in fact, on my Marauder, because my Marauder's build is unsustainable, um, I'm gonna try to work in Poacher's Mark into his build, because he's, he's gonna need it. But, um, secondly, the, um, Grinding 100% increased flash charges, which, before I forget, I got that in there too. Stun duration is a waste, but um, I like everything else about it though. But I am starting to come across uh, yellow belts that are starting to give me uh, resistances that are more than 21%. So, but again, the 50% uh, increased flash charges, that, that's very valuable. Same thing here. Um, basically, killing one monster is just going to almost give me full charges. So again, I need I need my flask to fill back up quickly. And while I'm here, here's one of the here's one of my other main flasks, Rock Gut. I mainly have this in here if um if my on, if my onslaught and or my frenzy charges is about to fall off. I cast that, gives uh, gives those buffs a new leash on life. It uh, refreshes my onslaught duration. So, um, so, so yeah, I think uh, I've pretty much covered my abilities here. Um. I guess um, another boot I'm take, I've taken into consideration. This one here, the big drawback to it is uh, um, something else I forgot to mention earlier. Energy shield is totally useless to me. So, if I had any kind of energy shield at all, the moment I cast Blood Rage, it goes bye-bye. So, no point in having it. But uh, armor... It's only somewhat useful, so. But fire resist, movement speed, uh, extra chance to ignite is always good. Again, that interacts very well with the the mod at the bottom on pyre. And then 25 increased damage against ignited enemies. Nice boots to have, but a uh, big drawback is uh. This one here also has cold and chaos resist. And not to mention, this is going to be a bitch and a half to try to get the sockets right for. Because it's got to have two green and two red. That means i got to have a... I'd have to spend probably 100 chromatics. Uh, I think I had it set up for... I think it was uh, at least two green and one red. And then hope to hell that the, the fourth socket is also another red. So it's a big gamble. So, uh, I, I suppose I could probably, um, let me do this real quick. I'll do, um, to kind of show a sample. And you don't want down, you don't want re you don't want da physical damage reflection on this. 
and I will kill myself almost in immediately. I'll go with that. And then, let me, uh, let me put this back. Oh, wrong one. Oh, and, um, uh, this is also another pair of boots I was considering having. Um, uh, like the 100% evasion during Onslaught, the big drop, 10% chance to dodge spell hits while phasing. Um, for a while, I think it's called a Quartz Flask that, uh, increases your dodge and also gives you phasing. I, that is one mechanic I cannot stand. Because, um, I actually don't want to be able to run through monsters. I want to be able to stand, I want to stay put right there, killing them all. And when it comes to mouse aiming, I've got the aim of a Stormtrooper. Numerous times that's happened, I'll be phasing, and I'm not actually having the mouse pointer clicking a monster. I'm just holding down the right mouse button because he'll, she just keeps doing it, but she'll eventually start slowly going right through the monsters, which I don't want. So, still a keeper though, but not going to do much with it. And then on my do list, give this to him, go back to, go back to my museum. Let me go ahead and um, kind of give you a sample of how this works. <clears throat> okay, get a blood rage. Charge dash it is my gap closer. And for some reason, uh, I'm at max resources. And with this build, I can have up to three power charges. And I often say that in my streams, and I'll state it here. I am not a speedrunner. I'm a speed guy, but I'm not a speedrunner. I'm not a fan of uh, one-click clearer type builds. You know, you, you click the mouse one time and the entire room whoosh, wipes. That's not me. And someone's exploding corpses. Pick that up. But I usually try to kill everything, and I also I also stop to look over everything. Um, as stated at the start of the stream, I played solo self on that. I got Storm Herald. I'm out of the way. Uh oh, frozen. earlier, charge dash is my gap closer. And 
and um, I typically stop to pick up most currency, except for um, scrolls of wisdom. Usually I can get those. Uh, I can make those a lot faster. Actually, just trading in transmutation orbs and whatnot, stuff like that. I can. It's more effective to do it that way. Beyond monsters. And we got elemental thorns. And we got a boss right here. Open up a portal. Onslaught's about to run out. Cast a veil haze, something I keep forgetting to do. I wonder. Yep. Nope. So let's go ahead and work on this boss. I guess while I'm here. And that'll help keep my uh, onslaught buff up. And another thing I like about the, uh, about the uh, last mod on Pyre, about destroying the enemies, is that it's a bloody explosion. <laughs> on my duelist, um, I don't know the exact name of it, but one of the um, one of the gladiator nodes is uh, killed enemies explode, dealing like five percent of their max health or something like that. But um, those explosions are basically like infernal blow explosions. It just like there's no there's no bloody gory explosion like. Like this one has, it just, that's it, they disappear. Uh, Orb of Agi. Man, like as you can see here, you know, kind of gory. Where are they all? So this, oh, there they are. There they are. Okay, looks like I gotta run all the way back. There we go. Full clear. That's how the build works. So let me go ahead and get these uh, ID'd here. Ooh, got a bunch of mods on this one. But unfortunately, yup, it's gonna have to go bye bye. Um, and basically, for my rings, they are best in slot right now. Unless I can, um, this one here I found from a, 
like a essence of delirium, I think it's called. It gave me a 40% increased damage with poison. So, trying to find a better ring than this is going to be a very tall order. So, Hello. so let me go talk to Navali and continue to vend it off. everything okay um well that should do it so um, I'll just go ahead and cut it off here but um sorry if I left out anything or sorry if I wasn't informative enough but I basically just did this video on a whim So, otherwise, thanks for watching and see you next time. Take care.